called Arcadius. I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch, and today I've got something interesting for ya. A device uh, unlike uh, any other uh, I have. Got it from the medical university. And let's see what's there. We've got a bunch of dials, we've got an uh, input socket, the power switch, and of course three Nixie tubes. This is a Statham SP1401, Sierra Papa 1401 uh, blood pressure monitor. It's got some connections on the back. And let's take a look at, uh, at the inside of the device because uh, it's unlike um, any other electronics I have ever seen. So let's get to the bench. And we've got it on the bench. It's got some uh, very non-typical nuts right over here. Let's get a zoomed view. You've got you've got a uh, pin wrench that can be replaced with <coughs> with bending pliers. And it comes off very nicely. I think that those recessed uh, flat nuts were there to enable putting multiple units side by side. It was a uh, strictly professional device for use in hospital settings that uh, you could uh, gang a few units of those uh, at, uh, at the patient's bed. And uh, it works uh, with an uh, external uh, probe that, uh, that measures uh, the, the venal or arterial blood pressure. The, the probe uh, has a membrane uh, and uh, is placed uh, on a stand coupled with, um, with a plastic tube that goes into a uh, catheter. And uh, this, is, uh, this is very cumbersome to do outside uh, a uh, hospital setting, so those units were strictly meant for, for use in, uh, in hospitals. So uh, discombobulating this uh, device We've got a sandwich type uh, enclosure made of uh, two pretty thick uh, aluminum plates and uh, we've got an uh, insulation cover underneath the <laughs> discombobulation. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> we've got a lovely, absolutely lovely printed circuit board. <laughs> two of them. Let's get a better view on this one. It's so hand designed with those curvy traces. <laughs> All the cable bundles, uh, they are tied with, um, with thin uh, zip ties. And uh, the boards are marked uh, Stadham uh, 41173B, made in USA. There's a nameplate uh, underneath. Stetham Physiological Division uh, 2230 Stetham Boulevard, uh, Oxnard in California. Model SP-1401, serial number 416. 
and uh, it is wired for 220 volts, 50 hertz, and uh, that's because uh, it was uh, ordered by a uh, Dutch university hospital. Maybe it was ordered for someone else uh, initially, but uh, here we can see Academic uh, Ziekenhuis by the Universiteit van Amsterdam. This is uh, the academic hospital of the Amsterdam University, one of the Amsterdam universities, because um, there's also Freie Universiteit. My, my friend uh, John Cornelis um, once worked uh, at the Freie Universiteit. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's get on to the front and back panel connections and, and controls. Let's do the back panel first. So here we've got um, the auxiliary power outlet, we've got the fuels, we've got the power inlet, uh, but I've got no matching plug for it. The ground terminal, amplifier output and computer input, computer output and uh, the jumper. And uh, if we take a closer look, uh, it connects uh, the, the both sides, uh, connects the amplifier output with the computer input. Looking at the front panel, we've got, uh, of course, we've got Nixie tubes for indicating the um, blood pressure in millimeters uh, mercury. We've got the mode switch, uh, systolic, diastolic, mean, venous, positive and negative. Uh, I am by no means um, a uh, medical electronics professional, so uh, I uh, I can only I can only say what I suspect uh, those controls mean. The mean diastolic and systolic uh, pulmonary pressure, and uh, that was the arterial pressure, sensitivity control, and uh, zero balance control. And uh, if we take a look at the potentiometers, this is a lockable potentiometer. The outs, uh, Outer nut uh, is uh, for locking the the pot, the arbor, and uh, only when it is unlocked, um, you can uh, rotate it. When it is uh, fully locked, it won't budge. So uh, this is uh, for stabilizing the the position uh, against uh, accidental uh, accidental. Uh, throwing it uh, out of adjustment. And here we've got the same mechanism, only that it's not controlled by hand, but uh, by tools. I'm not sure if it's uh, because of the lacking and the missing uh, knob, or if it was uh, meant to be like this uh, from the get-go, but we can take a closer look at how it is done. We've got a conical, and on the on the thread, and uh, we've got a uh, nut that uh, clamps it uh, toward the center, making it uh, impossible to to turn the arbor. Well, I, unless you use the first look. <laughs> mm, let's... Am I gonna get... Am I gonna get it with 11? Hardly, but it's still possible. Clamped it all the way. And yeah. <laughs> it almost won't budge. Uh, and now the potentiometer itself 
on schools. <laughs> Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Anyway, we've got something that looks bad, bad if it's lit. Uh, pulse failure, the power control and switch. And in order to get a better view of what's happening inside this unit, we have to unscrew one of the painted circuit boards. Mm, let me grab the screwdriver. Discombobulation in progress. So the enclosure consists of two L-shaped uh, brackets that are connected together with uh, with uh, another uh, pair of uh, L brackets uh, for attaching the board, one on this side for for the smaller board, uh, the other one for the larger board. We've got two power transformers um, attached to those uh, L brackets. One of those transformer powers uh, powers the large board. The other one powers the small board, and um, the small board uh, contains uh, Nixie tube uh, control circuit. It uses uh, seventy four. 141 uh, Nixie drivers, a very typical uh, Nixie tube control chip, and it uses uh, 7490A uh, decade uh, counters, then the TTL kind. It, uh, it also has the high voltage power supply for the Nixies. Those are the plate resistors. It also has a bunch of uh, other transistors and uh, integrated circuit. It's got a, a multi turn uh, trimmer. It's also a, another trimmer right here. This uh, this trimmer goes to, to the red, black and uh, orange uh, cable bundle. And we've got cable bundles going to the Nixie tubes. There, there's a corner WA uh, beaver cap. Uh, uh, let's zoom on in to take a closer look. That's the, uh, the beaver cap. <laughs> it doesn't look good anymore. I'm not sure if I should uh, turn on the device. Um, without uh, replacing it, but but how? Oh, uh, there's another one. Oh, I think I'm gonna try. <laughs> so uh, we also have uh, on the on the top side um, all the markings on the printed circuit boards. They're handmade. See, it's it's all. Handwritten. <laughs> Thing of beauty, try forever. And uh, for connecting the, the the cables to the printed circuit board, we've got turrets. NASA style. <laughs> it's uh, it's just plain loveliness to um, to look at this board. So uh, what I have figured out is that this uh, power socket it's just uh, connected in parallel with uh, with the input port there's no fuse in between and uh, and no switch so uh, if I can uh, if I can uh, connect a wire to to the terminals uh, on uh, on this. Uh, I might be able to fire up the device. 
let's uh, let's attach uh, the smaller PCB so that it doesn't pose a risk of making a uh, short socket. Oh, and by the way, what I wanted to show you, it's, it's something very special here on the input connector, the probe connector. It has it has concentric um, concentric pins uh, with the with the proper lead uh, covered with uh, with ceramic, and then there's an insul there's a uh, shield uh, a, a metal metal tube a shield uh, soldered with uh, with the connector itself. It is uh, attached with a uh, some kind of a collar and uh, and screws on uh, on the on the metal parts. I ain't never seen something like that. <laughs> Real dear American professional electronics, and it was made by Canon, the the same Canon as uh, the XLR co connectors. So, let's just get it powered up. Gotta find some, some power cable for that. solder those wires to to the connector uh, looks like it's been a long time since anyone soldered anything to it might as well do something different, like desoldering those original cables and connecting them with Vago connectors, uh, the 221, making it a lot safer to experiment on. Let me get this straight, because I'm a nut. I uh, I really should uh, connect the ground too. I really should, but Yeah. Hmm. Let's just uh, attach this pesky little bugger somewhere and and yeah, we'll have the enclosure grounded. And the pesky little bugger is attached. <laughs> Ready for fire up? I, I think I should be doing it with a variac, but <laughs> I don't care enough. And 
Woohoo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let's just. It's just displaying random numbers. Uh, out of uh, out of the function, uh, it's uh, it's in single digit, and and if I uh, choose any function, it will be displaying some other numbers. If I fiddle with the if I fiddle with the dials... Oh, by the way, there's also a uh, switch for operating and uh, balancing and uh, calibrating the device. Let's see if, uh, if the dials uh, affect it. Affects the indication anyhow. Oh, and by the way, the the power indicator doesn't seem to work. What if I put it to operate to balance? Two thirty three. Now it's uh, it's got a mighty different uh, a mighty different uh, indication in the negative uh, venous pressure. If you see the digits going dark and bright on the, on the video, it's probably because of some lighting shenanigans or the frequency synchronization. But uh, my camera, I uh, I've set it to to 50 hertz, but. Uh, some crap might be <laughs> might be happening <laughs> anyway turn it off that disappears and uh, turning it on and it appears uh, again and now let me see what's happening if uh, if i disconnect the amplifier output and computer input this jumper looks like a uh, certain hook And now the connection is discombobulated, and uh, let's take a closer look at... Oh, I also disconnected the power. Seems like the indications uh, were also uh, follow the same trend as, uh, as before. Which means that the amplifier part might uh, not be working, or or the all the circuits, 
after the the amplifier might uh, might not work at all and when i took a closer look at the small pcb i noticed that uh, there was one wire going to the going to the counter input and uh, let's see what happens if i uh, if i disconnect that wire then anything that uh, that looks like signal input for the board so those wires go to the nexus Anything that goes uh, that looks like a uh, signal input, it will probably be this one. Goes through R514 and and further this transistor, not transistor. This transistor. Yeah, with gold plate that uh, leads uh, 3646401. I've never even heard about uh, an electronic parts like that. Yeah, it's a lot of mysteries. So, those two dark wires, they, they just connect to the R four five R hundred fifty four surprisingly one of them goes to the next tube no Yeah, it uh, it might be a, a possibility <coughs> that uh, the thin one <coughs> is uh, is bundled together with uh, with the Nexi wires. It goes to the third uh, Nexi tube. It it might be for the decimal point. I'm not sure. So uh, this is not the droid we are looking for. So where is the droid we are looking for? It would be, it would be the red wire. The the other one, uh, it only goes to this potentiometer and uh, and nothing else. So uh, we have to look for the signal input right here and what if i what if i disconnect this wire oh the thing of beauty and enjoy forever <laughs> i hook terminal wrapping the the turret like I said, uh, it's uh, it's just a lovely thing. <laughs> the the way it is built. When I first took a look at it, uh, it was just uh, way beyond impressive. And yeah, we are touching the ground. Where's the other screw? Hmm. I just cover it with with the insulation. So uh, 
now uh, any anything on this part won't matter and uh, probably anything uh, related to the switch won't matter either so it is time to try firing it up let's go for launch and triple nine <laughs> that's a triple niner But, why did it just show triple zero? Mm, that's very interesting. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, so, let me grab a multimeter. And let's see, let's see if that wire has any voltage on it. 1.6 volts DC. And the terminal where I uh, disconnected the wire, it's, it's at, uh, it's at zero. And I wonder, I wonder if I uh, connect uh, the um, any voltage, uh, any voltage input, uh, any signal. What happens if uh, if I uh, hook up a power supply, uh, an adjustable power supply, to? To this part uh, and <laughs> maybe maybe I should just uh, grab uh, some voltage from the circuit <coughs> and then uh, and then just uh, use a potentiometer and uh, apply uh, adjustable DC voltage uh, with uh, with the potentiometer, seeing seeing how the uh, how the voltage affects uh, the indication. So let's take a closer look at CR11, CR14. This looks like this. Uh, this, uh, this looks like a full wave, not full bridge rectifier. Those are the uh, wires going to the transformer. And uh, yeah, in order to test my hypothesis, <coughs> is it on? Or is it on? So, grab the ground with one. Yeah, it's uh, it's ten volts DC. <laughs> Should be perfect. Of course, uh, any manipulations I'm doing on the device, uh, if I have to grab it by hand, so I, uh, I disconnect the power first.
So this would be the 10 volts DC. And all I want to do now is uh, connecting a potentiometer between the, the 10 volts DC and, uh, and the ground with the wiper on the, on the pin under test. I might be trying a, a helipot, uh, a helitrim. Where did I have those? Uh, here they are. Hundred K. So let me just look how so th this would be the the wiper and those would be the the contacts. Let's make it the ground. So all I need is uh, grabbing a bunch of wires. Yeah, let's get the yellow on the adjustable end. Make the orange positive and and purple negative. And yeah, the redundant brown also make it negative. So yellow will be yellow will be this. Plus ten will be this. And of course the largest the, the largest traces on the birds they are the ground. So I've got the potentiometer hooked up to the board. Let's turn it down uh, all the way. The indicator is go for launch. Power is yeah nine ninety seven like the old police number in Poland nine ninety-eight and now I'm turning the pot up but it looks like the DC voltage uh, on the pin doesn't affect it, so uh, my hypothesis is that 
we need to apply uh, some sort of uh, AC signal. It is also interesting that after I measured after I measured the voltage, uh, it seems like I was wrong. Like I might have made a mistake. Yes, I made a mistake. <laughs> I just jumbled the positive uh, that should be here. I thought this was the positive. <laughs> Shenanigans. So, turning the pot all the way down. Moving the false positive to the true positive. Resuming launch sequence. Device go for launch. Power go for launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. And let's raise the power, then the voltage. As I raise the voltage, we can see the indications uh, changing. It's basically a uh, Nixie digital voltmeter. <laughs> Which means that I can use it for measuring uh, analog uh, DC voltage. Let's let's turn it up really slowly. And let's measure the indication of nine ninety nine. Synchronization shenanigans. Closing in on the value. It shows some kind of inertia. Yeah, I think I got it. So let's measure the the voltage uh, at which uh, this uh, this happens. Uh, how many volts do I have uh, on the on the wiper that gives me nine ninety nine? One point uh, one eighty six volts. <laughs> and now let's get it to five hundred and see if um, the voltage response is linear. Zero point five eighty four. That means that um, the voltage response is linear. At uh, half indication, uh, I've got uh, half voltage, or the other way around. And so let's let's reverse engineer this this board 
just a teeny tiny bit more. So uh, the device is fully at uh, at the entry point uh, of the small board. Uh, we've got an analog signal. Then the device uh, is digital only, uh, only starting on this board. Anything computer related, <laughs> it must have been an uh, analog computer rather than a digital one. So let's reverse engineer this uh, this board uh, partially to see if I've got any option for adjusting the input signal that goes in here. It goes through RN55 uh, and R105. Uh, those, uh, those two, it looks like a like they are some kind of a uh, voltage divider. R105 uh, passes the signal further and R106, uh, it's the resistor to ground. Um, RN, uh, R104 is uh, the serial resistor of the voltage divider. So uh, the signal, the signal goes for this resistor, entering the metal can uh, LM709CH, probably a uh, operational amplifier, goes to this huge, uh, this uh, this huge. Uh, capacitor that says uh, 0.33 microfarads 100 volts so uh, this is where the signal comes in and this is uh, something something further but not the ground and it might be that uh, this potentiometer is for adjusting the sensitivity. It's also another helipot here, then in the heli trim, because uh, helipot, uh, and they are the margin uh, potentiometers uh, for the front panels. So, knowing that uh, the small printed circuit board is, uh, in fact, a, uh, a uh, voltmeter. It fills me with determination. And I might do some uh, experiments of this device, although the large board <coughs> doesn't really seem to work like it should, but... Uh, at least I can use the Nixie indicator for for my purposes. <laughs> so that's uh, that's just hospital loveliness. <laughs> I also have one more hospital loveliness to show you in uh, one of my future videos, but we'll get onto it. Real soon. So, I, I don't think I will put it back together. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, that's, uh, that's just a lovely device. I, uh, when I got it something like over a year ago, uh, I first got it uh, starting um, last year, but uh, I wanted to make a video, but uh, there were some problems that uh, prevented me from doing it. And now I'm doing it at last, and um, 
this is just uh, this is just pure loveliness I wanted to show you and uh, and yeah I've got a few American professional devices uh, from uh, from the university so have fun see you next time <laughs>